Hi, I'm Mark Sloboda, and this is The Real Politique. We can call this Russia's season of hell in Ukraine. As a result of the Kiev regime building up some 700,000 men under arms through a policy of mass forced conscription, a flood of Western arms to equip them, and a new Pentagon planned and war game strategy of attacking everywhere all along Russia's undermanned defensive lines in the south and east of Ukraine at once or in quick succession with fast-moving diversion reconnaissance groups, mechanized infantry, and mass human wave cannon fodder attacks trying to get under, exhaust, and tie down Russian artillery, rocket systems, and aviation. Russian troops have been forced to prioritize, withdraw from, and abandon substantial territory in Kharkov and now her son to avoid being overrun and uh, enveloped. As it is impossible to believe that Russian intelligence failed to notice and alert the building up of these forces over months, we must regard it as a political failure of the Kremlin to recognize the dangers this presented and adequately prepare for it. The self-limiting restrictions of the special military operation in terms of manpower and targeting have led to this humiliating and costly retreat on multiple fronts, especially in the light that Russia is now de facto in a total war with much of NATO's total military and economic might in Ukraine. Yet inexplicably, only some 15% of Russia's active duty military force has thus far been allocated and deployed to the special military operation. More should have been deployed and Russian reserves should have been called up and mobilized far earlier beginning, really. This failure has led to costly defeats in terms of PR, psychological warfare, and lives of both Russian military and East Ukrainian civilians in areas they have withdrawn from, surrendered to the tender mercies of Kiev regime brown shirts who are, in their own words, hunting them down and killing them like pigs as collaborators. Adding insult to injury, this has been coupled with apparent U.S. destruction of the Nord Stream gas pipelines to Europe and damaging Kiev regime terrorist attacks on the Kerch Bridge to Crimea. The Russian government has now finally taken steps to mobilize and increase the Russian intervention force strength, but it will take some one to three months until all the reservists are fully retrained, organized, equipped, and deployed into the theater. Meanwhile, Kiev regime forces are continuing their all-or-nothing counteroffensive everywhere at once, forcing further Russian withdrawals to the south in Kherson and from the Oskol River line in Krasny Laman in Kharkov and northern Donbass, where a 40,000-strong Ukrainian and Western mercenary force is now threatening Lugansk. Russian forces are on the defensive and backpedaling under these overwhelming numbers. It is only in central Donetsk that Russia continues on the offensive, making slow marginal gains towards encircling Bakhmut and Advevka. There are also indications of a large new Kiev regime offensive about to be launched in the south, either into Zaporozhye or southern Donetsk, that could threaten to divide and cut off the supply lines of Russian forces in southern Ukraine. In order to avoid heavy casualties and being enveloped by superior numbers, Russian forces have thus far adopted a tactic similar to the ancient Mongol horse archery. They fire their long-range weapons, then wheel and pull back, trading territory for distance, and fire again, repeating ad nauseum, inflicting heavy casualties on the lightly armored advancing Kiev regime troops. But there's only so far that they can do this before being forced to make a decision to stand and fight or give up crucial strategic areas like Kherson City, Melitopol, the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant, or Mariupol. It seems unlikely they will be able to defend all of these key points, so they will have to prioritize and withdraw further where necessary 
and hold where they can until the cavalry arrives in force towards the beginning of December. By then, the Kev regime's counteroffensive should have run out of steam. Losses of finite Western gear and vehicles they can't repair and can ill afford to lose, trained troops to operate them, and supplies dwindling. Reinforced, fresh Russian forces then look poised to launch their own winter counteroffensive. But until then, they must continue to endure Russia's autumn season of hell in Ukraine and hold on as best they can. 